Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. C U S A T, or the Cochin University of Science and Technology, is a federal university in India. It is a pit stop for people pursuing science and technology. In order to enter this prestigious institution, you have to administer the Common Admission Test, also known as CAT. While it is a rigorous exam, it, like all other exams, can be topped using preparation. This episode here will look into last-minute preparation by solving questions. In this episode, we'll be especially dealing with questions from the subject chemistry. So let's start off with our first question. The orbital angular momentum of an electron revolving in the p orbital is a0, bh by root 2 pi, ch by 2 pi, d half h by 2 pi, e h by 2 root 2 pi. So how do we solve this question? Well, in order for this question to have a premise, we need to understand the orbital angular momentum formula. Now that formula can be written down as h by 2 pi times under root of L times L plus 1. So you need to calculate L times L plus 1, take its square root, and then multiply that to the fraction h divided by 2 pi. Now, L here represents the azimuthal quantum number. And the azimuthal quantum number represents subshells. So here, we have an apt example of using this formula. Now here, we are having a p orbital where the electron is revolving. So therefore, the azimuthal quantum number here equals 1. So therefore, when you apply that into the formula, you get h by 2 pi times 1 into 1 plus 1, which is equal to h by 2 pi times under root of 2. 1 plus 1 gives you 2, 2 times 1 gives you 2, so under root of 2. Now remember, the square root of 2 goes into the whole number 2 twice. So therefore, I mean, the square root of 2 goes into the whole number 2 root 2 times. So therefore, the final answer for the orbital angular momentum of an electron in the p orbital will be h by root 2 pi. So therefore, Option B is the correct option. Zero is incorrect because here H and pi are constants. Um, option C is incorrect because again it has the whole number. Option D because there is the coefficient half. And then option E is incorrect because the, there is a 2 root 2 in the denominator. So therefore option B H by root 2 pi is the right answer. Let's look at another question. The radius of the first Bohr orbit of hydrogen atom is 0.59 angstroms. The radius of the third orbit of helium plus will be 8.46, 0.705, 1.59, 1 1.41, or 2.38 angstroms. So, how do we solve this question? Well, in order to look at the question, we need to understand the Bohr radius of the Bohr orbit. And when it comes to the Bohr's model of the atom, it is always for hydrogen-like species. The reason being that Bohr's model is only applicable to a single electron atom. Now, 
the radius's formula is 0 0.529 times n square over z angstroms. So n stands for the number of orbit, z here stands for um, the atomic number. Now remember our atom here is helium. The species here we have is helium plus and we have uh, uh, we are asked to identify the radius of the third orbit. So therefore in this case our n will be equal to 0 0.529 times 3 squared divided by 2 which is 9 into 0 0.529 divided by 2. Now in order to simplify our calculations we'll just you know convert the decimal to a fraction so we get 9 by 2 into 529 divided by 1000. So uh, 529 times 9 gives you 4771 divide that by 2000. Now when we do the division here, 4771 over 2000, we'll get a 2, obviously, and then the remainder will be 2771. And then when you put in, I mean of course it will, be, it will not be 2000, it will be 4000, so then you have a remainder of 771. And then you'll put in a decimal point and you get 7710 as the numerator then you'll have to put in a 3 to get 6000 and then you get 1710 which is again lesser so you put in an extra zero so that's 17100 so you put in an 8 so that's 16000 to get another 100 and then to get another what we call 1,000, and then you add in one more to get a 10,000, and then you put in 5 in order to get the final quotient. So the radius of the third orbit of helium plus will be 2.385 angstroms. So therefore, the correct option in this case is option E, 2.38 angstroms. And we found that out by using the, the formula for the radius of Bohr orbit, which is 0.529 times n squared divided by z in the unit of angstroms. Let's move on to the final question for today. We have various units given here. Which one of the following sets of units represents the smallest and the largest amount of energy respectively. Is it joules and erg, erg and calories, calories and electron volts, liter atoms and joules, electron volts and liter atoms? So how do we solve this question? We need to use conversion. So the idea here is that all units are to be converted to a standard unit. Now the SI unit of energy here is joules. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert every, um, every, one, every unit in this, you know, question to joules in order to find out which of these is the smallest and which of these is the largest. So one joules equals to one joules. That's common sense. What about one calories? Well, one calories is equal to 4.184 joules. Again, common conversion, so therefore people memorize it. If we want to find out the amount of electron volt, well, the amount of joules in an electron volt, then one electron volt equals 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. So as you can see, electron volt is quite smaller than joules. Now what about one liter atom? Well, this is tricky because we're looking at liters and atom, atmosphere. So for that, we would need to multiply one joule 
with 8.31447 joules per mole Kelvin and divide this value by 0.08206 liter atom atmosphere per, per mole Kelvin. The idea is multiplying and dividing by the universal gas constant. So you get, you know, um, what we're doing is we are canceling out um, mole Kelvin and mole Kelvin, and you're canceling out um, what we call the liter atmosphere unit from the numerator and denominator. So the final unit on the right hand side is joules. So we have 8.31447 divided by 0 0.08206 joules. Now since it's the gas constant, it's usually quite similar to each other. And if we look at the decimal points, there's a difference of 100. So the final answer is approximately equal to 101.32 joules. Now that we know the values of all the units, um, except for erg, which we will find out, since one erg is, you know, 10 raised to minus 7 joules, it is also quite small. So, now we know the values of all units of energy in joules. So, 1 joule equals 1 joule. We have values here which are lesser than 1 joule. For example, 1 erg equals 10 raised to minus 7 joule. That's pretty small. But 1 electron volt is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. But 1 electron volt is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. So, therefore, that means So now that we know the values of all the units, let's start comparing. One joule equals one joule. Well, that's the standard. We have units here which are lesser than one joule. For example, one erg is 10 raised to minus seven joules. And one electron volts is 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules. So therefore, one electron volt will become the smallest of the units of energy. Now, what about the larger units of energy? One calorie is 4.184 joules, while one liter atom is 101.32 joules. So, therefore, this is our largest unit of energy among the following. So, the option which contains electron volt as the smallest and liter atom as the largest unit, units of energy respectively would be option E, so this would be the correct option. A says joule and erg, which is incorrect. B says erg and calories, which again, which again is incorrect. The reason being that erg is not the smallest, while calories are not the largest. If we look at option C, it says calories and electron volts. Again, calories are larger than electron volts, so that's wrong. Option D says liter atoms and joules. Again, the same problem. Liter atoms are bigger than joules. So, the only option here which is correct is option E, electron volts and liter atoms. And this we found out by using common conversions to get the value of each unit in the standard unit, which is joules. Now that concludes this episode of Agile Rank Mate. To learn more about QSAT as well as other entrance examinations, please do visit our channel and subscribe to it in order to get more videos. If you want to get notifications about our latest videos, then please hit the notifications icon present below. If you've loved what you've seen, then please don't forget to like it and comment on it in the comment section again, present down below. So that's for today, folks. Until the next episode, take care, stay safe, Keep learning, ta-ta for now.